problems on upper and lower dot box sums or upper and lower Riemann sums. Dot box sums is also known as Riemann sums. Find UPF and LPF for the function f of x is equals to x on the close interval 0 comma 1 and the partition p is equals to the set consisting of 0 comma 1 by 3 comma 2 by 3 comma 1 that is we have to find the upper Riemann sum and lower Riemann sum for the given function f of x equal to x which is defined on the close interval 0 to 1 with respect to the given partition p. What are all given to us? We are given the function y is equals to f of x equals to x. The interval 0 to 1. The partition p is equals to the set consisting of 0 comma 1 by 3 comma 2 by 3 comma 1. That is the close interval 0 to 1 is divided into 3 sub intervals. What you have to do now? We have to find LPF and UPF. That is lower and upper Riemann sums. The lower sum of f with respect to the partition p is l of p comma f which is defined as the sum i is equals to 1 to n small m i into delta i. The upper sum of f with respect to the same partition p is defined as u of p comma f is equals to the sum i is equals to 1 to n capital M i into delta i. What is the graph of the function y is equals to x? This is the graph of the function f of x is equal to x or y equals to x. Yeah, this is a graph. Let us trace the graph. This is a 1. Since y equals to x, both x value and y value are the same. Wherever we see the values of x and y are the same. So this is the line y equal to x which is passing through the origin and having x coordinate and y coordinate the same. Let us find the value of upper Riemann sum and lower Riemann sum. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, this is the origin 0 comma 0. y is equals to f of x is equal to x is the given function and we also given the partition p is equals to 0 comma 1 by 3 comma 2 by 3 comma 1. The 1 can written as 3 by 3 that is 0 to 1 is divided into 3 sub intervals namely I1. I1 is the first sub interval consisting of the point 0, 1 by 3. Now the second sub interval is 1 by 3 to 2 by 3. That is the one close interval 1 by 3, 2 by 3. Then the third sub interval is 2 by 3 to 1. That is 2 by 3, 3 by 3. So this partition consists of four points and hence we will have three sub intervals. Now what are the points here? The points are 0, 1 by 3, 2 by 3, 1. Let us label the points on the x axis. This is 0, 0. This is 1 by 3, 0. That is x value is 1 by 3, y value is 0. This point is 2 by 3, 0. This point is 1 comma 0. So these are the points we are going to consider. Consider the first sub interval. This is the second sub interval. This is the third sub interval. So we have a three sub intervals I1, I2, I3. What is this distance? We know that delta R stands for length of the rth sub interval. Now what is the length of the first sub interval which is known as delta 1? 
so delta 1 how do you find delta 1 delta 1 is the difference of the first sub interval look at this what is the first sub interval 0 comma 1 by 3 that is second point minus first point therefore delta 1 is 1 by 3 so the length of the first sub interval is 1 by 3 what about this this is the second sub interval what is the length of this sub interval that is delta 2 how do you get delta 2 from i2 what is i2 the second sub interval namely 1 by 3 comma 2 by 3 what is the difference second value minus first value that is delta 2 is 2 by 3 minus 1 by 3 is 1 by 3 this is also 1 by 3 now this is i3 we are going to find delta 3 what is delta 3 delta 3 is the length of the third sub interval for this we have to consider third sub interval namely 2 by 3 comma 3 by 3 what is the difference now 3 by 3 minus 2 by 3 is 1 by 3 we have written 1 as 3 by 3 so that is easy for us to subtract thus delta 3 is also 1 by 3 hence delta 1 is 1 by 3 delta 2 is 1 by 3 delta 3 is 1 by 3 why they are all having equal length because the partition points are in equal distance so we divide the close interval 0 to 1 into 3 equal sub intervals since we have divided the close interval 0 to 1 into 3 equal sub intervals we are having the length which are all equal and equal to 1 by 3 now these are 3 sub intervals i1 i2 i3 now what are the values we are going to find the values of y when you keep x is equals to 0 what is y value f of 0 what is f of 0 that is 0 now x is equal to 1 by 3 because 0 is over now 1 by 3 when x is equal to 1 by 3 what is y 1 by 3 because y equal to x just now we discussed the graph of y equal to x the graph of y equal to x is always passing through the origin and having both the x coordinate and the y coordinate same value therefore 1 by 3 y value is also 1 by 3 next point is x is 2 by 3 what is y y value it is also 2 by 3 the next is x is 1 what is y y is also 1 thus we have 0 comma 0 1 by 3 comma 1 by 3 2 by 3 comma 2 by 3 1 comma 1 so these are the points in which the given curve y equal to x passes through let us label these points this is 0 comma 0 the next one is this is 1 by 3 comma 1 by 3 the next point is 2 by 3 comma 2 by 3 the next point is 1 comma 1 so these are the points namely 0 comma 0 1 by 3 comma 1 by 3 2 by 3 comma 2 by 3 1 comma 1 what is the equation of the curve this is a curve y is equals to x which is passing through the origin the point 1 by 3 comma 1 by 3 2 by 3 comma 2 by 3 1 comma 1 thus we have to evaluate the lower sum how do you evaluate lower sum the lower sum is nothing but the area of the region under this curve under this curve bounded by x axis and this one as well as this line this line that is we have to find the area of these three parts how do you find we are going to find the first lower sum then we find the upper sum
to find the lower sum first we have to find infimum of each and every sub interval that is infimum of i1 i2 i3 what is the infimum of i1 this is the i1 this is the line we have to consider here there are two points namely 0 comma 0 1 by 3 comma 1 by 3 infimum is always the least value which is the least value 0 therefore infimum of i1 is the value of the function f at the value 0 that is f of 0 what is f of 0 f of 0 is 0 therefore here we will not get any area that is nothing but a straight line that is the one no area therefore infimum of i1 is m1 that is equals to 0 now we are going to find the infimum of the sub interval i2 in fact we are going to fill this with a rectangle now let us find the infimum of the interval i2 now this is the part of the given curve it starts from 1 by 3 to 2 by 3 what is the least value 1 by 3 therefore infimum of the interval i2 will be the value of the function at the least value that is f of 1 by 3 what is f of 1 by 3 f of 1 by 3 is 1 by 3 because y equal to f of x equal to x this is the area in which what is infimum infimum is 1 by 3 therefore we have to fill this area with rectangle up to 1 by 3 only not up to 2 by 3 is up to 1 by 3 therefore m2 is f of 1 by 3 that is equal to 1 by 3 now we are going to find the infimum of i3 there is a third sub interval here consider the part of the curve the part of the curve is from 2 by 3 to 1 which is the least value 2 by 3 therefore the infimum of the interval i3 will be the value of the function at the point 2 by 3 at the point 2 by 3 that is f of 2 by 3 what is f of 2 by 3 2 by 3 therefore here we are going to fill this area with rectangle starting from x axis to the point 2 by 3 therefore infimum of i3 will be f of 2 by 3 what is f of 2 by 3? That is 2 by 3. Thus we have found infimum of i1, i2, i3. Infimum of i1 is 0. Infimum of i2 is 1 by 3. Infimum of i3 is 2 by 3. Now let us find upper sum. The same process. So let me go quickly. Let us consider this. The same thing is repeated here, i1, i2, i3. Now the intervals are given as 1 by 3, 1 by 3, 1 by 3. There is no change in that. Now these are three sub-intervals. The points are from 1 by 3 to 1 by 3. Here is 2 by 3 to 2 by 3. And this point represents 1 comma 1. 1 comma 1. The curve or the given function y equal to x must pass through all these four points. So this is the curve y equals to x. Now we are going to find upper sum. To find upper sum we need supremum of each and every interval. If you consider the, this diagram and this diagram the only difference will be infimum and supremum. We are going to find supremum of i1, i2, i3. How to find the supremum of the first sub-interval? Or what is the supremum of the first sub-interval? If we consider the curve, the part of the curve is from this point to this point. That is, 
the interval is from 0 to 1 by 3. Since we are going to find supremum, we are going to fill between 0 and 1 by 3. 1 by 3 is greater. Since we find the supremum, we are going to fill this region with the rectangle starting from x-axis up to the point 1 by 3. This is the one. What is supremum of I1 now? Normally we denote it by capital M1. What is capital M1? Capital M1 is the value of the function at this point. At this point. Because 0, 1 by 3, 2 by 3, they all give the infimum value. Whereas 1 by 3, 2 by 3, 3 by 3 give supremum value. Because the function is the increasing function. Whenever the given function is an increasing function, then the first point of every subinterval gives infimum. That is, value of the function at the first point gives infimum. Similarly, the value of the function at the end point give supremum. Therefore, for I1, it is 0 to 1 by 3. Now, we are going to find the supremum. Therefore, the supremum is nothing but f of 1 by 3. This value, f of 1 by 3. What is f of 1 by 3? Is 1 by 3 because the function is y equal to x. Now, what is supremum of I2? Coming to this region I2, we are going to fill this region with the rectangle starting from x axis up to the point 2 by 3 because in this interval 1 by 3 comma 2 by 3 the supremum is 2 by 3 this point 2 by 3 gives the supremum therefore we are going to fill this region with rectangle from x axis up to the point 2 by 3 then what is supremum of I2 it is denoted by capital M2 capital M2 is the value of the function at 2 by 3 at 2 by 3 that is f of 2 by 3 capital M2 is equal to f of 2 by 3 that is equal to 2 by 3 now what is the supremum of I3 for this consider the sub interval I3 this is the region here the I3 is from 2 by 3 to 1. Therefore, we are going to fill this region with rectangle starting from x axis up to 1. Yes, we are filled. Then what is supremum of I3? That is capital M3. Capital M3 is value of the function at 1. Value of the function at 1. That is M3 equals to F of 1. That is equals to 1. Supremum of I1, I2, I3 are respectively 1 by 3, 2 by 3 and 1. These are the graphs of lower sum and upper sum. The given function is y equal to x. The given partition is p equals to 0, 1 by 3, 2 by 3, 1. Now, we have found m1, m2, m3. We have found the infimum of first, second and third intervals, namely small m1, small m2, small m3 or 0, 1 by 3, 2 by 3 respectively. When you come to the upper sum, we have found the values of the supremum of each and every interval. They are M, capital M1, capital M2, capital M3, whose values are 1 by 3, 2 by 3 and 1 respectively. Also, we know that the length of the each sub-interval is 1 by 3 because we have divided the sub-interval into equal parts and the sub-intervals are I1 is equal to 0 to 1 by 3, then 1 by 3 to 2 by 3, then 2 by 3 to 1. This is the one we have already found.
Now we are going to find the lower Riemann sum and the upper Riemann sum or the lower dot box sum and the upper dot box sum. Yes, this is the one. What's the formula to find the lower dot box sum? The formula is L of P comma F where P is the partition, F is the given function. So we are going to find the lower sum of the function F with respect to the given partition. That is defined by the formula I equal to 1 to N M I into delta I. Here N equal to 3 because we have 3 sub intervals. Therefore I equal to 1 to 3. If we expand this we get M1 delta 1 plus M2 delta 2 plus M3 delta 3. We know all the values delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 each is equal to 1 by 3 and small m1 is 0, small m2 is 1 by 3, small m3 is 2 by 3. Substitute all these values here. m1 is 0, small m2 is 1 by 3, small m3 is 2 by 3. Delta 1 is 1 by 3, delta 2 is 1 by 3, delta 3 is 1 by 3. If you see here, 1 by 3 is a common factor. Therefore, take it out. When you take 1 by 3 out, we get 0 plus 1 by 3 plus 2 by 3. Now, let us add these three numbers. Uh, denominator is 3. They add the numerator. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 by 3 is 1. And again, 1 into 1 by 3, that is equal to 1 by 3. Thus, the lower Riemann sum of the given function with respect to the given partition is 1 by 3. What is the upper Riemann sum? The formula is UPF is equals to summation I equal to 1 to N capital MI into delta I. But here N is equal to 3 because we have only 3 sub intervals. If we expand this, we get capital M1 delta 1 plus capital M2 delta 2 plus capital M3 delta 3. Let us substitute all the values. Capital M1, capital M2, capital M3, delta 1, delta 2, delta 3. We get M1 is 1 by 3, capital M2 is 2 by 3, capital M3 is 1, delta 1 is 1 by 3, delta 2 is 1 by 3, delta 3 is 1 by 3 as before. 1 by 3 is a common factor, take it out. When you take 1 by 3 is a common factor, we get 1 by 3 plus 2 by 3 plus 1. The 1 we are writing as 3 by 3. So that in the denominator we have 3, it is easy to calculate. Therefore, we are writing 1 is equal to 3 by 3. Since we have denominator of every term is 3, therefore simply add the numerator. That is 1 plus 2 plus 3, that is 6 by 3, 6 by 3 is 2 and hence 1 by 3 to 2, that is equal to 2 by 3. Therefore, the upper Riemann sum of the function with respect to the partition is 2 by 3. Thus, the lower Riemann sum is 1 by 3, upper Riemann sum is 2 by 3. And remember that if we change the partition, the value of UPF and LPF also vary.